Hello students, welcome you all to the course of Compiler Design. In today's lecture, we will be studying about LR parsers. Let us recap the definition for a parser. The parser is taking input in the form of a sequence of tokens and produces output in the form of a parse tree. So we know very well that the source program passes through the lexical analysis, which is the first phase of the compiler, and we get a set of tokens. These tokens are then given to the second phase of the compiler, which is nothing but the parser. And through the parsing action, we are obtaining the parse tree. And if there is any syntax error, that will be detected by this second phase of the compiler. So we will just have a broad overview by the types of parsers. We have already seen this. So we have top-down parsers and bottom-up parsers. And under top-down parsers, we have studied about backtracking parsers and without backtracking, uh, recursive descendant and non-recursive descendant types we have already seen. So under bottom-up parsers, we have already seen operator precedence. So this today's lecture, what it covers is LR parsers. And the LR parser is having four types. Now, this is the most basic type, LR of zero parser. And uh, all these three, SLR, CLR, and LALR, are uh, slightly modified versions of the LR zero parser. So, we will restrict our study to LR zero of parser in this lecture. So as I already told you, LR parser is a bottom-up parser. And uh, for context-free grammar, that is very generally used by computer programming languages. So normally, in all our compilers, mainly bottom-up parsing is done. So the parser will read their input from left to right and produces a rightmost derivation. That is why the name LR. And it is called a bottom-up parser because it attempts to reduce the top level grammar production by building up the leaves. We know all these definitions uh, earlier when we saw the bottom up parser definition. So LR parsers are most powerful for all deterministic parsers. So here we will see about LR zero parser. Now the term LR means as I told you L refers to the left to right scanning and R refers to the rightmost derivation in reverse. And uh, in between there is a number 0 which is referring to the number of unconsumed look ahead input symbols. As we go through the further algorithm and examples we will understand this uh, K factor more in detail. But uh, whatever we are going to see today is going to be for only one symbol. But there are parsers which take care of k number of look ahead symbols also. So the steps in the LR parsing is for the given input string we have to write the context free grammar. Okay, Any input string given we know very well what context free grammar is. So we have to find the grammar that will derive the input string. And then we have to check whether the grammar is ambiguous. So if it is ambiguous, ambiguity has to be removed. And then we have to obtain something called an argumented production for the given grammar. And uh, later we have to create a canonical collection of LR items for which we have to draw the data flow diagram which is nothing but the DFA. And finally we have to construct the parsing table. Uh, now all this might look little complicated but already we have seen what it is to write a context free grammar and already we know what is ambiguity. So our uh, discussion will be on 3, 4, 5 and 6, these four steps. So we will assume we have a grammar already that is for a given input string we have written the grammar and that grammar is ambiguity removed. So with that we will proceed the discussion. So we are not going to take a raw input string and uh, proceed because our 
uh, idea here is to understand what the LR parsing method is. So we will concentrate on that. We are not going to again spend time in writing the grammar and doing the uh, ambiguity removal, etc. Okay, so we will assume that the grammar is given. For the grammar, we will find the argument grammar. Um, later, you just go through the slide. I will move on to the example so that we understand it better. And then later when you come and go through this definition, uh, it will be easier to understand. So we are given a grammar example, S-R-O-A-A. And we have uh, three productions actually. So the second is A-R-O, small a, capital A, and A-R-O, small b. So this is the grammar given to us. So we have not started with the input string. We are already starting with the grammar. So first, uh, next step, third step was to find the Argument production. So what do you mean by argument is uh, we are going to insert a dot symbol here and we are going to introduce one more grammar here S dash. Okay, already we have S arrow A. We are introducing one more production S dash arrow dot S. Okay, and then since dot is there before S, yes, we will include all the productions of S. Yes. So productions of S are S arrow A that we have included here. And then dot AA is there. So since dot and after that there is a non-terminal. So we will include all the protections of capital A. So AARO dot AA and AARO dot B. We are including. As we proceed you will understand better. Okay. So this type of introducing a new production is called as the argument production where we are putting this dot operator. And then for every state, we have to obtain the closure. So we are taking S dash dot S. So since we are having dot, we included the production of S. Okay, so that we will term as the first state, I0. Okay, don't take it as 10. This is I, capital I and 0. So this is the first state. So this first state, since dot A is there, we have to have till the terminal appears. So uh, dot A is there. So whatever A productions are there, we are including. So A arrow dot A A and A arrow B. Okay. So this all these together will form the first state. Now we our aim is to keep moving this dot till the end. It has to parse. We are parsing this dot till the end of the string. So this dot has to move from here to the end. So next we are moving for the first production. So S dash, the dot was initially here. We have moved it to the end. Okay. So the string is completed. So this is a uh, closed state. We have completed the first production. Now we move on to the next production. We had S arrow dot AA. Now we are moving the dot one symbol inside. But if I move again capital A is coming. So whenever I have a non-terminal after the dot symbol, I have to include all the uh, productions related to that non-terminal. So again we will include a arrow dot a a and a arrow dot b. Okay. So don't bother about uh, these uh, things. Once you see the diagram and you come back to this discussion, it will be easier to understand. So now here again it is incomplete. This dot has to move end. Again, this dot has to move here and this dot also has to come to the end. So we have to keep repeating. So from I0, we came off to I1. Then for I2, we are doing this. Then again, this has to proceed. So coming to I3, I am moving this dot. Okay. So A dot A comes. Again, dot A is there. So those productions I will include. And then finally for B, it is coming to the end. Initially, it was here that has come to the end. And AA also, I moved in the middle, so I have come to the end. And uh, similarly, the last production also. So, this way I will be moving. Once I see the diagram, uh, you will understand better. So, the same thing I have drawn as a diagram. You can see here. See, initially, we had only uh, S arrow, AA, A arrow, AA and B. We introduced the argument production, s dash arrow dot s. Okay. 
Now we had this as the I naught. So this is me my I naught. Because it is S dash arrow dot S. For dot S I am including this production. Because dot A is coming I am including the A productions. Now for every production. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4 productions here. For 4 of them we have to draw 4 different arrows. So first is S dash arrow dot S over the symbol capital S. I can shift the dot to the end. So from the beginning the dot has been shifted to the end. Okay. So this particular production is completed. S dash arrow S dot has been reached. So from I0 I1 state. Then for the second production I am taking. So S arrow A dot A. This dot I am shifting by one symbol. One look ahead symbol. Okay. So now again A is there. Non-terminal capital A is there. So, I include those two productions here. You understand? Otherwise, it is not. It is only for this first, uh, second production I am doing this step. But since dot A is coming, I have to include this also. So, this will be my A2. So, for this production over the symbol capital A, I have reached this. Because there is a non-terminal, again I am repeating this. Now, I come to the third production. A arrow dot A A. So, this particular dot has been shifted by one place. From small a, it is shifted to this place. Again, capital A is coming. So, I include both the productions. For the last production, a arrow dot b. When I am doing, it is coming b dot. So, this also is completed. So, this i1 is a complete state. i4 is a complete state. But here, again, dot has not come to the end. So, I will proceed again. So, over the symbol capital A, if I shift, I will come to the end. So, now I5 also is a completed state. But what about these two productions? Again, A dot A will come. So, over the symbol A means it will come here. The same thing. So, I don't need to draw a new state. Similarly, for this production A arrow dot B, it will come to A arrow B dot, which is nothing but I4. So, I have drawn the line here. Okay, this might look little confusing. Please carefully listen. See here, if I want to draw another state, it will become A arrow small a dot capital A. But it is already here. So that is why I am not drawing a new state here. But I am just shifting the arrow here. Similarly, A arrow dot B, if I am going to take a new state, it will become A arrow B dot, which is already existing. So I drew the arrow here. Now coming to the uh, last production, here we have A arrow, A dot A. So this again we have to shift which will be the same thing. Then this also, it comes to A arrow, A, A dot. Okay, this is the final state. So the first production is completed. These two productions are the repeat like how it I told you here. It is recursive. So this will again come here. For B it will come here. Okay, hope you understand this. So, in case for the exam you find it difficult to write the closure, you can very well draw the diagram. Diagram drawing is will be easier. And once you draw this diagram, you can write the closure. But while writing, it should be coming first. Okay, so leave some space. You can draw the diagram, verify your correctness. And then you can write the closure as I showed you in the previous slide. Is it clear? So, we are just taking every production and shifting the dot the dot operator by one symbol. And whichever symbol I am shifting, I am writing in the arrow here. So, I just written the explanation. So, I0 on symbol S is going to I1. So, I write it as 1. And then I0 as 2. And then 5, 6. So, these are the state numbers. Okay. I0, I2, I3 are going to I3. So, I write it as S3. And so, this is how we are just uh, mentioning the shift operation. So, there are two things. We are either shifting the operation or going to a state. That we will see while we draw the diagram. So, as you can see here, there were three productions which are going, uh, keeping it as end state. Okay. This S arrow A A. Then A arrow A A dot. And then A arrow B. 
So I number them as 1, 2 and 3. Okay. So S dash uh, arrow S dot. That is one accept state. That is the end of the string. S is the start symbol. So whenever I reach the end of the start symbol, it is the accept state. And this is a reduce state. Because I have come to the end of the string, I can reduce by this production. Uh, when we did the shift reduce parsing also, you know that. Is it not? Whenever I come across a production, same as given in the grammar, I can call it as a reduce production. Till I reach that, I will be doing shift operation. Is it not? So, it is the same concept here also. When I come to A, R, O, B, it is the end of the production. So, I can take it as a reduce operation. Because it is 3, I put it as R3, reduce. Similarly, this is the first production. So, I have given it as R1. This is the second production. See, this is the number 1, 2 and 3. So, I am putting it as R3, R1 and R2. This is going to be my R3. This is my R1. This is my R2. That is reducing by this production. Same as what we did in the shift reduce parser. So, don't get confused. Same grammar we were given. The grammar only we are numbering it as 1, 2 and 3. And that is what we are going to write in the parsing table. The final step in this algorithm was to draw the parse table. So, for that only I am explaining here. So, now we will move on to draw the parse table to complete this discussion. So, I have the diagram here for your reference. So, whenever the state is going to another state on a terminal, it is considered to be a shift move. And whenever it is on a variable, we go to the end means it is going to be a go to. So, I start here from I0 over the symbol A, over the symbol A, I shifted to I3. So, that is why I put S3. Then over the symbol B, I shift to I4. So, that is why I put S4. And then over the symbol capital A, I have come to I2 state. Okay. So, I have put 2 here. Whenever it is a non-terminal, we have to go to a state. Whenever it is a terminal, I can do the shift operation. Similarly, for S, I went to I1. So, I put 1 here. Okay. So, the table has two things, action and go to. This we already saw when we studied about top-down parsing. Always there will be a parsing table which will have an action part and a go to part. Okay. So, action part will be on the terminal symbols and the go to will be on the non-terminal symbols. So, similarly for I1, we have reached the end of the straight. So, we are having the accept. And I2, if I take again over the symbol A, we are coming to I3, so S3. B means I4, so S4. And over the symbol capital A, I am going to I5. Okay, so it is 5 here. Similarly, from I3 over the symbol A, I am shifting to I3, so S3. Over the symbol B, I am shifting to I4, so S4. Whereas over the symbol A, I am shifting to I6. Okay, the end state. Then from I4, as I told you, I4 is a reduced state. It is a production. So, I am putting R3. Similarly, the same for BN dollar. And uh, I5 means we are going to R1 production. So, R1, R1, R1. Similarly, I6 means R2, R2, R2. Okay. So, this will be the parsing table obtained. So, any input symbol given, I can use this parsing table and perform my parser operation. So, this is the discussion for LR table. So, the LR parser works in this manner. We will create the argument grammar and from the argument grammar, we will try to parse the string so that we reach the end of the string and using this diagram, we will draw the parsing table. Thank you.